What's up, brother Kwame? I'm still getting stuff together. I'll be, I'll be up here in a second. Can you? Great near, great near, man. Man, you know, I be getting people trying to fool me into saying the days of the week. You know, it's crew, it's a crew world we live in. You know, so I'm, I'm reaching my push up maximum, right? There are only so many push ups a brother can do. Um, I need to pull up this flyer that I need to share with everybody. Uh, I don't know how I would share it over the broadcast other than reading it, but it will pop up on my timeline. Uh, it has been confirmed Brother Wakesa Matamiso will be returning back to Columbus and he will be doing uh, uh, the second part to the Warrior... Warrior Hiller Builder Seminar. And in this seminar, we're going to actually be working with how to apply the information that he's bringing. So, I'm going to be in a place. Friday evening session is free. You know what I'm saying? So, we can get people some information on that Friday session. But... The Saturday session is going to be $99. I know a lot of y'all right now is like, <gasps> 99 it's The people that's listening later, you know what I'm saying? You know, but hell, I mean, y'all pay $99 to go see R. Kelly's ass, you know what I'm saying? Y'all pay $99 to go see Jay-Z ass, you know what I'm saying? Y'all pay $99 for some good weed. Y'all spend $99 at the club. And we talking about self-improvement. We talking about self-mastery here. You know what I'm saying? So I am in, I'm, I'm, I'm working on helping people see the value of investing in yourself. At height of my health was doing 300 times at 300 times at a time up to a thousand three times a day. Oh shit! I ain't, I ain't gonna. You ain't gonna get me lying. I, I, I can't. I never. Uh. -uh. You said three hundred push-ups at a time? No, not me. Mm mm. Mm. No Lord. No. 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 You know what I'm saying? I, man, that. Hey, I salute you. I salute you. I ain't trying to say the days of the week that many times, you know? All right, so we're going to do our toast. Uh, but hold on. Uh, the name of the workshop is going to be Injected Racial Scripts Countering the Instructional Design of Racism and Anti-Blackness by Wakesa My O Matamiso. Friday, August 11th at 7 p.m. Hold on. Oof. Give me an opportunity to get my cheat sheets out. As well as get... Get my seeing aids. <sighs>
Countering the Instructional Design of Racism and Anti-Blackness by Wakesa O. Matamio, Matamizmao. Friday, August 11th at 7 p.m. Secretly, these scripts control how we educate our children and how we tell stories, even when the content is African-centered. Um, now, oftentimes you'll hear me talk about on, on the show, learning to control our narrative, learning to control our stories, learning to tell our stories. This is a major, major part of nation building. This is a major part of a of, of warrior, being a warrior, learning how to control the narrative. We don't control the narratives of our personal lives, and we definitely don't control the narrative of of our people, right? We think we do. So we come up with all types of stories and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? But we need to really learn how to structure the stories so that we could get our children to start investing in themselves and in their community, right? Um, I am doing um, uh, a study right now on this thing called permaculture. Permaculture. And we're going to talk about some of the tenets, some of the ideas behind permaculture on um, the, the YouTube show today. I just want to share some of the principles and see what we can use in our building. See, because the whole piece is this, man. When, when you're trying to rebuild something, oftentimes you may have to use recycled materials. You may have to find, you know what I'm saying, when you're building something and you don't have a lot. You may have to find some bricks on somebody else's lot. You know what I'm saying? You may have to um, um, add some sand to the to 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 the concrete. You know what I'm saying? You may have to borrow some windows from some places. You may need to pick up some scraps. But the whole piece is you. The ultimate goal is to build, and that's what we're trying to do, right? So let me get back and finish reading. Yes. So learning to control that narrative. Because a lot of people don't understand that it's important, the story that you tell yourself is very important. Of course, that was back in the day. Word, word. I understand, bro. You know, but I, even back in the day, I wasn't, I wasn't in that type of shape. I did a lot of crazy stuff. But that wasn't even crazy. You know what I'm saying? That that right there, 300 a day, that wasn't crazy. Now, I didn't, I never worked up to that. Um... It will be at the Millennium Community School, 3500 Refugee Road, Columbus, Ohio. Now, I, I heard this dude um, when he came to Columbus last time. And I was so impressed that I wanted him to help train the teachers for the, uh, for the coming school year. So, um, he's coming to, to, to help train the teachers as well. So one of the things he's gonna be training on Saturday about Saturday about is this thing called the River of Touches. Um, it's a two-part Warrior Hiller building seminar, which is a continuation where we get into depth and learn how to use the River of Tur Touches. Where we learn on Saturday morning, we're gonna um, learn about turning superior, the turning superior inferior conflict into a circle of trust, emotional authenticity. Managing the power of recognition and touch. And then in the afternoon, we're going to do storytelling for healing, failure to success, grand story of success, family stories, stories, and warrior, healer, and builder stories. Now, I'm, I'm imagining that the workshops can be separated. You know what I'm saying? So you might want to just do the morning session or you might want to do the afternoon session. I'm suggesting that you do the whole damn thing. Those of us that are serious about building in our community, right? Because we got to start investing in ourselves and investing in our skills. Because we don't have, we need to be start being honest about this. Uh, we don't have all the skills that we need. And a little bit of training never hurts. Like I, I see people going to boxing practice. I see people going and they pay they pay the gym. I see people doing martial arts and they, they pay their instructor. You know what I'm saying? I see people going for their CDCs or going for those those extra courses so that you would be certified as a teacher or as a social worker. I see everybody being trained in their in, in skills. 
But when it comes to us getting getting trained in the skills of nation building, oh, we got a reason why we ain't gonna do it. I don't, I don't like that. I don't like. Uh, uh, uh. We need to get rid of a lot of that. So let's get into this toast, fam. Let's get into this toast. So we're gonna talk about some of the principles in permaculture. I'm reading right now. It's a very interesting read, man. Very interesting because what you what you start finding out is that there is they call it the name of the book is called the sustainable evolution. Revolution R is in case, so evolution is there. And what you're starting to find out is when you read this book, there are communities all over the world at this point in time that are building sustainable communities. And what is a sustainable community? They grow a majority of their own food. Um, they build their structures out of the materials that are around them. They are living comfortable and in many cases, pretty laid back lives. I mean, I'm quite sure they, they got to get up and hustle because you can't live a good life if you ain't getting up and hustle. So anybody that's looking for a life where you're not getting up and hustling, you know what I'm saying? You're not really looking for life. You're actually looking for death, right? Because that's, you know, in death, that's when you rest, right? So they're talking about, they're going around the globe and they're talking about um, these sustainable communities. But there is what they call principles of permaculture. And we're going to talk about some of these principles of permaculture um, in, in the next session. Um, I'm also reading a book called The Good Food Revolution, uh, on, on top of the other books that I'm reading right now, too. Um, on top of the other books that, that I'm reading right now, too. And I know a lot of y'all like, man, what does that have to do with what you do over at that school? All right? Now, I have to come up with ways because this... I just saw a video yesterday, fam. I'm going to drink my water while I tell you this. Right? Where these, these individuals in Silicon Valley that's making all this money on all this technology are all buying bunkers because they feel that in a minute the world is gonna blow up, and it's not. It's, it, and it's and it's a little. It's way different than when we was younger, like the two thousand thing. No, the, the reason they're building these bunkers is because they fear that their jobs, the the the, the computer programs, the the logarithms that they're developing, and the machines that they're developing is gonna put so many people out of jobs. That they feel they're gonna have to hide when the shit hit the fan. Um, Brother Kwame say Catherine Austin Fitz speaks of these kind of cultures. She's from Texas. Word, word. Um, is that on? Um, she comes on um, coast to coast, right? Um, but the whole piece that so you got these individuals who are building. The technology that's going to take people's jobs and they're taking their money and they're building these underground bunkers so that they can hide when people start running, going crazy. Because every job, every job that is out here, they're looking for a logarithm, they're looking for a robot, they're looking for somebody to replace. And without a new economic system coming into place, like a universal um, a universal pay type thing, it's gonna be horrible. Cause y'all got to understand this, right? Right now the system that we are existing in is based on, is based on you trading your labor for money so that you can get be a consumer, right? So you need to be able to create, you create money from your labor so that you can buy the shit that you're creating, right? 
Now, if this system continues in this way and they start laying off people and they start getting rid of people and they start coming up with robots to replace people, where are you going to get the capital? Where are you going where are you going to use your labor to be able to purchase the shit that's being made? Without universal money, without universal pay, without universal health care, you know what I'm saying? Where are you going to fit? It's a very cannibalistic system. It feeds on itself. Now, the thing that people need to realize is this. We can make the changes now. We can start preparing for the changes now because there's no way that this system is going to continue to be able to employ people in order to continue purchasing the shit that we're making. There's no way it could do it, right? So we need to start coming up with sustainable ways, looking at different ways of looking at the world. Right now, we're looking at the world, as Brother Kwame say, in a cannibalistic fashion, all right? So family, come on, drink your water with me. That's eight ounces down. So, the individuals in Silicon Valley are preparing for the meltdown. They're buying boats. They're buying bunkers. They're buying guns. All right? They got a crew, and they got people that's going to go underground with them, and they're going to stay underground until after all of the confusion is gone. Yeah, I mean, I, and um, uh, Brother Sean says, or Brother Hazen says, He's been trying to tell people forever. So now this is the issue. Because black folks is build, getting bug out bags and, and doing other shit like that. But family, let me, let, let, let's keep it all the way, all the way, all the way real. Right? You can have a bug, a bug out bag, but where the hell are you going to bug out to? Where you going to go? You know what I'm saying? This is why it's important for us to start creating tribes right, right where we are. You understand what I'm saying? tribes we complete with warriors elders and nation builders where we are able to click up in emergency situations so that we can make sure that our circle make sure our tribe is able to pull through while everybody's bugging out what we need to do is have a central spot in the city because everybody ain't going to the woods we might not even be able to make it to the woods we need to have a central spot where we all can hook up where we could take over a building where we secure the building, you know what I'm saying? And we could start gardening, you know what I'm saying? Where we could bring extra food, where we got individuals that are able to defend the territory until after the crisis is over. Period. Now, we could bug out and we could go run into the woods, but everybody run into the woods. The only way, the only reason that we will have to run out into the woods is if all the water and all that shit is cut off. And in most cases, that probably won't be cut off. That's going to be the last thing they're going to be worried about. We're just going to have to purify the water and stuff like that. But there are buildings big enough for three, three to four hundred of us to come and safely stay and govern ourselves. See, and, and that's the piece. The only way that people know how to get to the woods is on the expressway. So they building, we building all these bug out bags and talking about we gonna go and, and survive somewhere when, when we ain't surviving in the city. We don't got money for bunkers, we ain't got money for nothing. So we need to start learning how to plan, learning, practicing how to work together, practice on how to live together so that if, when something goes down, we can do it. And, and this whole permaculture piece is one of the things that may be able to help shine some light for us. I mean, and, and, and basically what permaculture is, is about getting back to the old ways in a modern fashion. I'm on, this my, I'm on 16 ounces right now. I'm going to take my rhodiola. I haven't noticed anything yet. Uh, hey, I mean, but hey, you know what? I lost, I lost about twenty pounds when I did my fast. I gained back about thirty. <laughs> All right, I'm doing my. I'm on twenty four, fam. Come on, drink with me.
You know the rules. You know the rules. This is this is grown folk time. You know what I'm saying? If you can't if you can't keep up with the drinking, you need to go and drop off. Come on now. Just get your water. 32 ounces. Come on. Drink for health. That's 24. Last one, 32 ounces. Come on, we drinking. We drinking like warriors up in here. Come on. Drink that water. Get that ashe up in you. Come on. Mm. No better way to start the day. So, what I have here is one of my special bottles. I don't think it's going to explode. I'm going to trust. Let me move my shit out the way. <clears throat> my electronics out the way. This is a bottle of Death Eater. This is one of the... This is the Death Eater batch because the only way I make Death Eater now is from pure burdock and dandelion root tea. Right, so there's no green tea in this. This is straight dandelion and burdock root, and this shit is incredible. Um, uh, brother Kwame got 56 in this. I'm taking off with family reunions today, and when away from home it gets difficult to get my hydration on. Oh, okay, oh, okay, cool, cool. So you're doing 56 ounces, all right. Um, oh, okay. I thought you did your family reunion earlier. So this is the other side of the family? Um, but this is the Death Eater fam. So let's see how it does. Yep. Nice and cool. So when you don't want them to go off, put them in the refrigerator. Not super fizzy. Hmm. Uh oh. That's the death eater. I call it death eater because these herbs, one of the herbs, dandelion, is said to cure death. I mean, like, damn. I mean, you can't, you can't get no better than that. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, damn. You know, I. Well, what, what else can I say? So first. Giving honor to the creator by whatever name you choose, call that creator. We call on that great energy. We call it into our presence. We call it into our lives, even though we know it never left. We call it from inside of us, and we say, I say. From there, we move to our personal ancestors. We lift up our glass, and we toast our personal ancestors. We toast those close ones to us. We toast those ones that are far off in our family line. We toast all of our ancestors. We remember them because... For hell for African is being forgotten, and we have I have taken a pledge. I have taken a vow. Where is my book? I have a vow, a vow-centered life where I have promised to never forget my ancestors. And I hope some of y'all will take your take a vow as well. Don't forget your ancestors, right? So we lift up our glass and we toast our ancestors and we call them by name. Those of us that know the name and get your glass out, right? So we call on, I call on personally, Miles Brown, Ms. Ann, Robert and Texan, and Davis, Ann Brown, Sr., Rosalie, Tilly, George Wee, Walter, Christopher, and Gatson, uh, Lena. Um, I'm enjoying my black seed with ginseng. Uh-oh. All right. Um, Fanny Gatson, Uncle Chris, Geneva Brown, Cleveland Brown, um, Herman Brown II. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. My Aunt Barbara Twiggs. Um, my aunt Barbara Twiggs, Alvira Brown, Gina Gaines, um, John Fillard, Jamon Jones, uh, Jeremiah Tappan, uh, Montague Pittman L, uh, Tony Clark, Pastor Yusuf Weston, No More X, um, Brother Sapet Ma Ra. Uh, uh, Elder Farmer, Elder Hairston, Elder Donaldson, 
um, Elder Millie, Dr. Mary Ann Williams, Brother Kojo Kamal, I think that was his last name, uh, Mark Walsh, uh, that's all I can think of. Y'all got any y'all want me to shout out? So we lift up our glass, lift up our glass, and we say, oh, Cecil Ellis, Margaret Ellis, Wash Ellis, Wash Ellis Jr., we lift up our glass and we say, I say, from there we move on to this present moment. Today is Nia. The day of purpose is the day as the modic principle of balance. Um, the uh, hermetic law for the day is rhythm. Um, the male name for the day for those born on this day is Kofi. The female name is Afua. Oh, that's my one of my daughters. All right, so. Um, I'm coming from the seven EEC principles and values. Emotional emancipation circle is what e e um, EEC stand for. And to, um, today, one, two, three, four, five, we are on the day of Mandu and Wolof. Mandu, being appreciative of what you have and not envious of others. Mandu. All right. In a con, a con ethics, today will be the day of justice. All right. Uh, in traditional Yoruba, attributes of good character, the day will be titu, endurance. Damn, if you gon if you gonna be purposeful, you got to have endurance. All right. So, um, I just thought I would share those with you. I'm going to try to um, keep up on those. And we're going to have conversations about each one of those. Um, actually, that's some good material. Cause I'm about to build off of that. So, um, we toast this moment in this day. The day of Nia. And all those other principles that you got, you have an opportunity to look up. Right? Uh, boom. We toast. From there, we move to our children, our children's children, onto affinity. We toast them today so that they will remember to toast us tomorrow. The thing that they see us doing will be the things that they will be doing in their old age. So we lift up our glass, and we do it with fervor, and we do it with energy, and we do it with excitement because our children gravitate to us. So if we pour in libations like this. We pour in libations for our ancestors. No, we got to do it lively, right? We got to throw some energy in it so our so our children can feel it because they, they know that we're reaching out and we're touching something and our children want to do it. So they'll start they'll start grabbing their little glasses and they'll start imitating us. All you got to do is watch my kids, man. All you got to do is watch my kids, right? They do what I do. Your kids will do what you do. Your nieces and nephews will do what you do with, with fervor and excitement. And they will imitate you. And that is the secret to us getting our children to start learning. Right? Emotional. Uh, Bruce Lee called it emotional content. Right? So we lift up our glass. And we say, Ashe. 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 I wish you peace. Power, joy, and 100 years. And by the way, that peace, power, and joy piece, I got from Brother Wakesa and his wife when they came to do the training. So I'm trying to tell you, this is some powerful shit, right? You know when I got the four, five, six, the four, the four things you need, proper proper breathing, proper proper water, um, proper food, proper movement, five, the five parts of your being. Right? Remember the five parts? Five parts, right? We got we got intuition, mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical, which is the thumb that holds all of it together. But the six, the six emotions, I got those, I got that from Brother Wakesa. Now, I'm trying to tell you, those of you who are not willing to invest in yourself, right? I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say, right? This nation building effort that we're doing requires you, requires you to invest in yourself and invest in your community, right? Stop shortchanging yourself, right? 
as you do for your parents, your children will do for you. Word. Word. So, let's drink up. Brother Kwame, you got to get some of this death eater, man. When you leaving town? Because I got a bottle. I got I got one of these. I got one of these bottles. I can get you. All right? So, um, you need to, um, I... I want you to try. I want you to. I want you to sample some of this Death Eater because this one right here is tart, and uh, yeah. And you know the only thing that could make it better a damn smoothie. Mm. Can you come by the school before you roll out? I'm gonna um I'm gonna take take one of these bottles and bring it bring it to the school if you could come get it. Mm mm mm. Oh yeah, and Sean King, brother Hazen, you need to get with me, man. You haven't had you haven't had a sample yet. Morna is real busy. Have to see how. All right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it with me just to say. Hey, if not this back, I get you on the next back. At least get you a sample. This is a berry and the last of my peach mix. Let me finish up the, uh, I'm going to pour that in there too. So, be sure to check me out on the YouTube channel, man. Those of you that's watching, man, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel because that's when we have the real discussion. You know what I'm saying? And we do the libations right here on Facebook because I never know um, who might who might want to uh, participate in a libation or the toast. Well, dude, you need to go and let me know when you want to do that so I can go and and get you get you a sample of, of this ambrosia. Now, I got other people that, you know, that's trying to, you know, you've been popping up every every now and then in the morning, so I owe you a glass. You know what I'm saying? Come get you, not a glass, I owe you a bottle. You know what I'm saying? You just get me my bottle back. <laughs> get me my bottle back, right? So, I want to thank everybody for tuning in, but let's see how this... Hot damn. Hot damn. Man, I'm about to do a dance. So, um, so, um, Hazen, hook up with me, man. Number been the same since, uh, way back. And I have, hell, I have my, every time I call into the phone company, be, oh, thank you for all the time you have been with us. You've been one of our customers before we was a company. I said, how the hell I do that? You know what I'm saying? I have actually been on T-Mobile longer than T-Mobile has existed. Do y'all know that? I mean, did you know? Did you know that that shit is possible? Mm, mm, mm. All right, family. So I toast you, and I am out. All right. So, cause I gotta get over here and do this show. All right. Peace. <laughs>